Eagle McMahon officially leaves Discmania. What the fuck does that mean? This is fine. I'm Swiss Cheese. You already know the one with all the holes in his game. Alongside me, the one who doesn't, Jefferson. And we're with the Disc Golf World. The Eagle departure from Discmania finally being verified surprised absolutely no one and officially closes a chapter of the brand. The question that arises is what can Discmania do to respond to the loss of two of the biggest names in the sport that were so intertwined to your brand identity? Just like when Simon left, this is going to be one of those moments disc golfers remember how they heard the news of Eagle leaving Discmania. Personally, I found out through the email that Discmania sent out that read, If you follow the discussion revolving around professional disc golf within the past couple of weeks, you might have come across speculation concerning Eagle McMahon, have been running wild on social media, and with heavy hearts, we're here to tell you those rumors are true. This was almost the moment I realized the entire video I made for Monday was going to piss off everyone when they go into it, thinking it was about Eagle, but instead I talk about Paul Kranz for five minutes. The email went on to say, Eagle is indeed flying out of the nest. Where he lands next is still anyone's guess. This is where I remind you to subscribe to not miss out on any other speculation where Eagle goes from the disc golf world. And honestly, that's not for us to speculate. We want to take this chance to thank Eagle for our shared journey together. When the young Coloradan joined our team in 2014, the world was a different place. Yeah, the P2 was still good mold before you ruined it. In the past nine years, it feels like everything has changed. Discmania has grown from a humble competitor on the global disc golf market to a household name. Much thanks to players like Eagle representing our brand. Or everyone talking about how they don't bag anything Discmania since they left Innova. Sure, the new plastic is dope, I can't argue that. But remember when these were being pushed on everyone? At the same time, Eagle has grown from a kid aspiring to become a touring professional to a bright young adult and a champion on tour both at home in the U.S. and internationally as well. Eagle's famous signature discs like Cloudbreakers, Iron Samurais, Rainmakers, and more have captured the imagination of players of all ages across the globe. Releases like these have greatly helped making both our brand and Eagle himself famous in the disc golf sphere. While it's certainly an end of an era for both Discmania and Eagle, the legacy of our shared journey will live on. If they meant live on through the insane eBay sales, they nailed it. I mean, they couldn't miss out on the last cash grab releasing the final Cloudbreaker. It does bring a tear to my eye looking back at my first Discmania mystery box getting the prototype. Just for me to throw it the next day. 16 year old me didn't give a fuck. This announcement feels completely unreal. After 9 years with Discmania, I'm now moving on. My entire journey into adulthood has been shared with Discmanias. My identity in disc golf has always been tied to the shield, which fills me with nostalgia. Countless incredible moments have been shared with the company. I owe them an immeasurable amount because without their support, I wouldn't be close to where I am today. With how much money he made Discmania, I don't think Ego owes them anything. If anything, Discmania should be thanking him and Simon while they're at it. He went on to say, I am so immensely grateful for the incredible times and achievements we've shared together. We've truly grown together side by side over the last decade, and I have so much love for everyone who's been involved with Discmania from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. This really is and has been one of the biggest and most conflicting decisions in my disc golf career and life at large. However, looking forward, I'm genuinely excited about the future ahead. Thank you all for your constant support. I have immense gratitude for helping me establish a life in disc golf and helping dreams become reality. This chapter has now closed, and I can't wait to share what's next. With Eagle's last remaining farewell swan song lasting a full week, it has many questioning what Discmania's response to their second premium and top 10 player loss in back-to-back years will be. At least you can ponder that over one last Cloudbreaker sale. What a better way to honor the moment. And in all honesty, it leaves a kind of conflicted message. As much as it is a respectful tribute and a great move by a brand to not only allow an opportunity for all the fans to support one last time and also a nice check out the door for Eagle, but it also seems like the final grasp to monetize on a departing product. Either way, Discmania with Simon's MVP payout money, the savings of Eagle's money coming off the books, a already signed premier young talent and USDGC winner Kyle Klein, Discmania has a solid foundational building block with money to spend, but an incredible large hole to fill from Eagle's departure. Let's be honest, that hole from Simon's departure certainly was not being filled by those Vanguard sales last year either, so big moves need to be had by Discmania. It's been covered here and by many, Discmania has been attached to Gannon Burr since his 2023 departure announcement at last year's All-Star Game. Though that one didn't stick, many, including us, felt it was only a matter of time till he eventually signs with Discmania. Locking in two premier young talents in Kyle Klein and Gannon Burr would be a great start. As good as those two talents are, is it enough to replace Eagle and Simon, though? And at this time, the answer is no. Could Discmania get behind marketing the two similar to Eagle and Simon and possibly grow each of their brands to the heights of the former Crush Boys? Sure, the two have yet to be part of a concentrated marketing effort by their brands in their short career. Prodigy just missed terribly, and Klein was behind Superstars. 
A complete rebranding and a dedicated marketing of two young proven winners on your roster might be enough to not lose your place in disc golf brand hierarchy, but certainly not enough to take your brand to the heights of the big dogs in the sport. Especially when you add up just how much disc mania lost in the coveted European market with the Eagle and Simon departure. The competition in that market will heat up with MVP and others looking to make footholds overseas. Even adding Gannon Burr's former teammate, Thunder Buddy, and rumored package deal Alden Harris to the roster also still doesn't net the sales that both the Eagle and Simon lost left in just the states alone or total, even with the Gannon initial signing blitz and future disc lineup sales. If Discmania stops there, this storyline lines up way too similar in what disc golf saw from Dynamic in the 2022 offseason. With the signings of Ricky and Kona and subsequent absorption by adventure capitalist House of Disc a year and a half later, it would kind of line up right around that first Worlds in Europe and possibly the final event on the property UC built. Enough with some of that tin hat contemplation. Locking in that lineup and building the brand as a whole, similar to Discmania's early days, going into what many are considering an unstable future market, might be the sound business decision also. Unquestionably the safest play. Also allows you to possibly target another player in the following offseason where another possible young talented winner in Cole Radolin might be available. But what about an all-in offseason response that could measure up to lineups of Innova and Discraft for this upcoming season? There are still some name players to have yet to announce that could solidify the lineup further than just Burr and Alden. What about a Colorado thrower and one of the more popular players on tour? Aaron Gossage is a talent with some promise and another player on tour who could benefit from dedicated marketing strategy. It doesn't seem likely, however, but a roster with Klein, Gannon, Goose, Alden, Ella, with Casey and Gavin being solid contributors, that's a very solid lineup. Adding Eliezer Middling, the teenage FPO phenom, would be the most aggressive and the final cherry on top. It would be an investment at the ground level that could pay off big in the future if her game continues to develop, and adds a large presence in the FPO also. I understand the likelihood of adding four players in an offseason is slim, and we certainly don't expect Goose to go anywhere but a return to Discraft. If you didn't get a chance to watch the Eagle Farewell video, you're not missing out besides maybe the cool background. And no, I'm not going to talk about the MVP theory claiming the Mountains Valley and his face spelling out the letters. Yeah, it's been a long offseason. The audio was super whack, and what the hell was going on in the background? It sounded like someone scribbling down the important parts. Well, that did inspire me to jot down some of my thoughts. I thought it was interesting that he said it would be a disservice to himself if he didn't leave Discmania at this time, bringing up this gut feeling for the new company he loves to repeat. He also mentions that there's a lot going on behind the scenes, and I'm not going to speculate on all that. However, I will just say the timeline of the downfall of Discmania lines up. Eagle highlights how tough it's been the last couple of seasons, and I saw a tweet that said it's almost been 900 days since his last win on tour. That's crazy to put into perspective, and that would only convince me to switch things up. What blew me away more was realizing Eagle is only 25. I don't know how I didn't realize that. Probably because he's been playing on tour for nine years. Grab those tinfoils hats, it's conspiracy time. There keeps being this mention of chapters coming to an end and that Discmania feels like a family. Or another line that stuck out to me was referring to Discmaniacs saying nothing will change, just a different brand. While Discmania being under the House of Discs lineup, what if Eagle is just moving over to one of those? A new chapter, but a part of the same book. What? Eagle just followed Streamline and MVP on Instagram? Did you say Streamline followed him back? Oh, and Eagle's girlfriend left Discmania? And she referenced chapters? Well, fuck, Eagle's going to streamline. In my eyes, the only way Discmania can come out of this with little damage is locking up Ganon for a while and keep Alden around until he pops or rack off the YouTube videos. Eagle hasn't played a full season in a while, so if anything, this is the perfect time for Discmania to rebrand. You already have the reigning US champ. Pair him up with another young superstar, and all of a sudden, every disc golfer under the age of 25 is a fan. Sure, that's only 3% of disc golfers, but someone's got to take over the younger players, and with what their talent is, why not lean into it? The Vanguard might not be popping now, but in three years, no one's going to remember that it's mid, meaning average, not a mid-range. I know our audience is a bit older than me. If you want to stay up to date with all things disc golf, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed. Those are the easiest ways to support the disc golf world. But that's not the only big mistake that Discmania made this week. Check out the video right here to hear why.